Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Carney. Um, I'm absolutely humbled to give this talk after the last two talks. Um, I have absolutely not changed the world yet, but maybe this is day one. Woohoo! Um, I'm a technical writer uh, on Google Chrome, and I've been helping to write documentation for developers to build for the modern web for a pretty long time. Uh, I can see uh, a lot of fellow coworkers who came here today who are actually building the web as well, who are pretty amazing. I also got to report to Peter for a while, um, which was a pretty special thing. So I'm very grateful for that moment in my life. Anyway, um, I'm here today because I want to talk about a project I started a few months ago, um, which is a little bit ambitious, maybe, which is to build um, an inclusive web. And yes, I actually mean I want to build a more inclusive web platform. Um, I think this project is crazy. It's definitely aspirational, um, probably not achievable. So that's interesting. <laughs> but I set this goal for myself to like just take a couple of months to think about it without being attached to anything. Um, maybe every day think about uh, an audience who's intentionally excluded or unintentionally excluded from the web. Think about one or two small actions I could do that day. Maybe review the actions that I, I did. I read a ton of books, um, some of them really terrible, um, some of them very useful. I, I wasn't actually getting anywhere with it, to be honest, despite all of my uh, attempts. Um, but I had a conversation with Vanessa. Um, and she was like, hey, we're going to do this thing in a little while. And I think you could get a project. And that project could actually be the starting point of something real and meaningful. So that's why I'm here. And I do have a tangible project. And that tangible project is to actually build uh, better developer surveys, uh, more specifically to build a developer survey platform that is intentionally inclusive. So today is day one of that project. Um, so a little bit about this team. <laughs> uh, it consists of me <laughs> and a GitHub project that I started back in May. And if you go to it, there's some ramblings in there. You're welcome to enjoy them. There's a blog post as well that introduces this crazy thought that um, started to develop in my head. Um, I, I actually am incredibly passionate about this. And in, you will find, if you know me and, and people here do know me, once I start working on something and I develop a team and we start working together, I'm pretty intense. So despite the fact that there's a stick figure there, if you choose to occupy that space, I can assure you we will be an effective team. Um, so yay, I like data. I work at Google. We love data. Um, I love data. But um, unlike all people who love data, I'm actually very skeptical about data. Um, I really like to pay close attention to the process of collecting data, what it means to collect data. It, like Numbers are almost meaningless unless you know the method in which they were captured. So <laughs> um, I think it's really relevant. Um, I went back to school a little while ago, and I started studying. And uh, one of the things that became an absolute priceless resource was Stack Overflow. Um, another absolute priceless resource that I use every day, all of my work at Google is published in GitHub. And so one of the things that um, has kind of stuck with me, even just over the last two or three years, they have these surveys. <laughs> um, I'm sure everyone here has heard of the uh, Stack Overflow survey. Have we heard of the Stack Overflow survey? Yes, yay. Um, well, I've been following it for about five years. Now I've been at Google for almost seven years. I've been following it. And for a while, there wasn't any demographics. And then I think around 2016, demographics appeared. And I was like, wow, they're, they're kind of not that great. Um, there's a lot of white guys, uh, uh, but maybe it'll get better. And actually, it did get better for a year. Um, and so in 2017, there was an improvement. I think in 2016, the number of respondents to the, over, uh, to the Stack Overflow survey was 92% men. And then in 2017, it was like, yeah, we made a 4% improvement in, in kind of shifting demographics. Uh, interestingly enough, in 2018, um, the survey came out and it broke all kinds of records. It almost doubled the number of people who responded to the Stack Overflow survey, but the number of respondents were 93% men and 75% white. Now, that may be fine, <laughs> except that the world is 51% female and 14% white. 
So when I look at data, clear away all kinds of assumptions and presumptions and thoughts and ideas. But if we're building products for the entire world, we should definitely be better representing that world when we build them. We are super far off it. Um, and we're not getting better, we're getting worse. Sorry. <laughs> um, and Stack Overflow isn't the only survey. Obviously, there's more out there. The GitHub open source survey was worse. It was 95% men, and they didn't even measure ethnic or any kind, anything else, just gender. Um, I did go on a search for surveys that were nicer. Like I was like, oh my god, there's got to be better surveys out there somewhere that are promising. Um, I did find this, I think it's Hacker, Hacker Survey, or Hacker Rank. Sorry, I had to look at my notes. I couldn't remember the name of it. They actually did um, a survey for women in tech where they actually sought out women to answer the questions to see if that would change some of the answers. It was more promising. They noticed that um, they found that there were a lot more uh, women students than were reported in other surveys. Like there's a rise in women in who are choosing computer science. Super promising. Uh, but not so great when you look at the levels in engineering. Um, the levels of engineering, I'm sure uh, there, are, there are some uh, women in the room, if you've looked at those levels in engineering, it's like this really sad, sorry, really bad drop at the levels of engineering. Um, what was interesting about this is they didn't look at like, oh, going from one to two to three to four, they literally looked at just going from junior to senior, which is just one climb. And even looking just at that, um, when you get up around women in the age of their 30s, uh, men are three times, three and a half times more likely to get from junior to senior. And that's just like the natural progression you would have in your career. So there's this obvious uh, trend where women are junior and stay junior and they don't shift. So that's something that was kind of a little bit of a bummer for me. Um, but it's not all bad. <laughs> um, I found one that was really promising. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, this one was really promising. GitLab's 2018 Global Developer Report actually reached 25% uh, respondent rate of women, and they wrote a blog post on it because they were super proud <laughs> that they were only 1% off the National uh, Computing Women in Technology, or National Community of Women in Technology. I'll probably get the acronym wrong, sorry. Um, and so they were like, yes, we are actually giving you a survey that results that are representative of the community, which is nice. That's, that is an achievable thing that no one has tried to achieve. Um, interestingly enough, they weren't intentional about it. Like, they didn't just get to that because they're cool, they're GitLab. They were failing miserably. They had a one-month survey at the end of 2017. They were failing, and they went on a massive social campaign to encourage women in the community to do their survey so they could up their numbers. So, and it worked. Um, so I kind of, I like the fact that they recognized there was a problem before the survey was over and they tried to fix it, which is not a trend. So anyway, that was kind of cool. So this project is actually about building an inclusive developer survey platform um, I really genuinely think that we can do this, and I'm gonna explain the model here. I didn't wanna put a ton of words up there because you'd be like, Ugh. but um, you know, if you think about Facebook, Facebook works. Like if you have like the, the algorithmic model of having one person who then knows a group of people who then like shares it, who then like shares it with another group of people, that kind of algorithmic model works. So I think one of the problems we have with developer surveys is everybody who has their own product does their own little survey and they make up their own little rules and then they like reproduce the results in silos. I think that's a flaw. I think we need to have an actual survey widget that we can get people to embed, even in their blogs. In whatever form of web application or whatever application they're producing, they should be able to insert this embed and run the same survey. So the idea behind this is we have an open inclusive survey that people can put in whatever output that they have, and we will be the place that controls the dashboards to show how that's going. Um, and I'm really, I put a couple of stats here. One is to reach 150,000 developers, which is 50,000 more than Stack Overflow's last survey. 
I don't actually think that's that ambitious, to be honest, because there's 10 million active developers out there. So we should be able to reach at least 150. I was like thinking, maybe I should put something really Google and crazy here. But I was like, no, keep it down. This is not your day job. So I put 150,000. Um, I also did put a kind of crazy um, couple of stats around percentages. I don't think the 35% women respond respondents is that ambitious. Uh, if, if we're already, already seeing GitLab off of a few social tweets, 25%. I think if we are actually trying to get uh, women uh, development groups in schools, through communities, or whatever else to participate, we should easily be able to hit that 35% number. And I know what you're thinking, it's above the number of people who are actually in the industry, so why would we want that? That's because we actually want to listen to their viewpoints, we actually want to understand what they're thinking, so that we have a, a, a bigger, stronger voice in building a stronger, a more inclusive platform. The 50% non-white is super ambitious, I'm not gonna lie. Like, the numbers are really bad in this field, but I think sometimes when things are really bad, you need to disrupt. So I felt like if I put a, a, a little better than average number here, it would just be another meaningless statistic. So I was thinking of being really intentional in targeting uh, non-white communities. Anyway, <laughs> um, there's lots to do. <laughs> when, I, when I added this here, this picture here, I was like, oh, I like, does anyone know what this is, this picture? The screenshot that I took? That's right, to do MVC. Thank you. What's up? <laughs> um, I need to probably talk to Adi Osmani, who's one of the co-creators of this, because like, they really need to up their contrast. Um, <laughs> love you, Adi, if you're watching this. I work with Adi. Um, he's amazing, and I'm just like here. He's, yeah. But anyway. Uh, this application, if you're learning, if you're new to development, to do MVC, is amazing. It is absolutely how I learned first build my first web application. And now, like, I'm building web applications all the time, but I do not have a clue how to keep track of all the frameworks. I have no idea how to understand all the tool sets and tool chains. But to do MVC is like the same thing every single time, but you can see it in 10 million different ways. And I just think. That simple model, that simple idea, but that you magnify and, and, and replicate and share across all kinds of levels of complexity might be a good way to push against some norms. So I intentionally included that picture. Um, you can kind of see some of the things I think we could start doing, um, but I also wanted to give a shout out to To Do MVC. The thing about this project that I really like, um, I really liked April's talk. This is kind of winging it, it's not in my notes, but I just want to say I really, really liked April's talk a lot. I've been following her, kind of stalking her a little bit. Um, and one of the things she said is I don't like when people talk about, like, they're not technical, so like, shut them out, don't listen to them. It's a major flaw in, in our system. And, and actually for years I was like, I'm not technical enough, keep getting more technical, keep getting more technical. Now I'm a little bit more technical and I'm like, where are the non-technical people? Like, where are the people who know how to draw pictures? And who know how to like, talk to the market? And like, who have some reasonable understanding of this planet? Because I'm in such a bubble. Um, I never thought I'd be in a bubble, but I'm such an, I bought a Subaru last week. Like, I'm literally, like, I never bought a car before in my life, a real, a new car. And last week I bought a Subaru and I was like, oh my God, like it's official. So, um, I just, I feel so passionate about building teams of different types of people, different types of, types of skills, different type, types of goals and energies and succeeding while, while working together, even with the conflict. So, if you wanna work with me, um, I kinda broke it down into project stuff and these same things are in the GitHub repository. You know, we need people who can actually help us create survey questions, like help me understand what would be a good survey. Like I know there's some general questions we need to ask of developers to like get a feel of the, of the universe, but there's also questions we aren't asking yet. So I really need some help with that. Um, we need to create a survey site, start with something really super simple. I'll probably try and roll with that over the next few days unless someone else wants to do it. Otherwise, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create a widget and some dashboards. I'm gonna start probably with um, survey.js, which I did a little playing around with it and the performance is okay. We can make it better. So. Um, um, that's when I'm gonna start doing, but if anyone has better ideas, wants to jump in and do that, that I think is a really great next step. 
We also need people who want to do the survey backend. So we need to be able to store and report the results. It's not that complicated. There's lots of samples out there. But you could do something really amazing with this, too, to support future partner work. So if you're really good at the back end, this is so there are some interesting challenges here. We also will need to run a survey social campaign. I think it should start in the beginning. Like Whenever we get a really awful hacker version of it, we need a social campaign. If no one joins this project, I'll probably write a Medium blog post. It probably will get read by a few hundred people, and that's it. But It'll be a start, right? So that's we need a proper social campaign. So if you know how to do that, please help me. Um, and then there's partnerships. Like there are so many great platforms out there that are trying to disrupt the way we think about coding. I mean, we've heard some today, <laughs> right? So there are a lot of people who are kind of going like, you know what? Being a person matters. Tech's cool. Being smart's cool. But being a person matters more. So I really genuinely think we can find partnerships, even if it's just like my 10 friends who have blogs, um, it's a start. And then finally, the next step is like get, them, get those surveys in the partner site, watch that dashboard, see it grow, see us learn from it, actually maybe be able to feed the results from these surveys back not just into one company, but into all the companies who are working together. So I'll put some resources here. This is a link to the GitHub project. It's in my own name. It's not a company. It's just me. Um, I may have to move it to something official later. I'm looking at Peter there. I'm like, this might have to move eventually. But for now, this is perfect. And I created a Slack channel. I'm really good on Slack. So um, even if you don't find all the details that you need right away, I will be super chatty and answer all questions and probably annoy you a lot with, I type as fast as I talk, and I talk fast. So, yeah, you're warned. And that's it. <laughs>